the addictive voice. Whether or not alcohol or drug dependence is a disease, addiction may be understood as a natural function of the human brain. In effect, you have two separate brains within your head which compete with each other. One is primitive, similar to the brain of a dog or horse. This we call the midbrain. It is basically the brain of, the, of a beast and its only purpose is to survive. The beast brain generates survival appetites that drive the rest of the body towards what it demands, such as oxygen, food, sex, and fluids. In some people, open parentheses, it matters not how, close parentheses, substances such as alcohol, cocaine, heroin, and marijuana get mixed in with the midbrain's real survival needs. Then that person is addicted and will do almost anything to continue the use of that substance, even if it means the loss of everything else that is important. The beast of booze or the beast of bus is ruthless in getting what it wants. But there is another brain that sits on top of the beast brain, the cerebral cortex. This new brain or neocortex allows human beings to be conscious, to think, to have language, and to solve problems. Your neocortex is you, and you can override any appetite, even for oxygen or food. Anyone can stop breathing until unconscious or stop eating until dead. In rational recovery, we use the neocortex or human brains ourselves to override the appetite for alcohol and other drugs. At first, defeating an addictive voice is tricky because your brain, your beast brain uses your language and thinking centers to get what it wants. For example, if you wisely decide that drinking is bad for you, and that you will stop, you will soon hear the old familiar voice telling you why you should continue drinking. You may even imagine a picture of what you want to drink and picture yourself drinking somewhere. This is your addictive voice. You make a wise decision to stop drinking, but your beast has used your language and visual centers in an attempt to ensure your continued use of alcohol. In order to defeat your addiction, you must compete with your midbrain for control of language. If you will compete, you will win, for beasts are short on intelligence. There are two parties to your addiction, you in it, the addictive voice, it. The addictive voice is simply any thinking, imaginary, or feeling that supports any use of alcohol ever. With your intelligence, you can easily recognize those parts of your addiction. If you drink to relieve depression, you can recognize those parts of your addiction. If you drink to relieve depression, you can recognize that feeling as part of your addictive voice. The structural model of addiction shows that the beast has no direct means to get what it wants. It must appeal to you to get alcohol or drugs into your bloodstream. It cannot speak. It cannot see. It has no arms or legs and it has no intelligence of its own, but it uses your thoughts, sees through your eyes, creates strong feelings and persuades you to use your hands, arms and legs in order to obtain its favorite substance. Your beast's favorite pronoun is I. When you hear the thought, I want to, I want a drink, you may recapture I by adding a T to the I. Then you will hear yourself thinking it. It wants to a drink. After you have recaptured the pronoun I, it will resort to the pronoun you and you will hear it say, you need a drink. You have been good, and you can have just a little. You can handle it. Just be careful this time. Sometimes it will even speak for both parties, you and it, by saying, we need something. Let's go downtown and get some. Recognizing the beast's use of pronouns can be very helpful in sticking to your decision to abstain from alcohol or drugs. 
When you recognize the addictive voice and understand its primitive origin, it will usually fall silent and then later return. It may whine a lot, but you are in control. Beasts have feelings too. When you have stopped drinking or using for a few days, you may feel uncomfortable. That is not physical craving, but only beast activity. Your beast will generate strong feelings, which may include anxiety, depression, anger, <clears throat> grief, and a desire to be left alone. These feelings are common in early sobriety, but they fade with time. Lifetime abstinence is a difficult is difficult commitment because your beast is terrified of its own death. It views alcohol or drugs as necessary to survival. Therefore, you will feel flooded with endless reasons to postpone your decision to quit drinking for good. And you may notice strong feelings, anxiety, sorrow, anger when you contemplate your decision to quit for good. Those feelings are not truly yours, but are the expressions of a fearful beast. Your old enemy is on the run. The beast is just a beast and it will finally surrender to you. To the neocortical authority, making the decision to stay sober and recognizing the beast for what it is changes the way your future looks. Your depression may no longer have a purpose. Stay alert for new beast activity. It may be sudden or gradual. It doesn't give up easily and it is strong. It is a strong opponent. When you feel the struggle within you, it is only old enemy having a hard time with its new master. You, knowing that builds great confidence that your addiction doesn't have to run your life. I hope this helps. I hope the energy that I put in it as I read helps and just imagine it giving you that extra support uh, we're here to help write your comments at the bottom and if i can help please let me know thank you